Well, good to see you again. Last time we talked into the woods. Yeah. You owe me tickets, by the way. You said your show was about to take off, and yeah. you said I'd be the only one in the audience. You made yes. I said, can I have tickets? And you said, yeah, but you'll be the only one there. Dan. Look at you. You're big time now. Well, thanks. So I want to go see your show. Well, no, thanks to you. You didn't turn up. You didn't come. But Thank I need God tickets. other people did, Dave. I, I need tickets, well, James. You can get tickets whenever you want. Okay. Well, You're you, welcome you, each and every day. We've got it on tape. It's, it's, hey, I, <laughs> I mean it then as I mean it now. Awesome. And look, I even wore a blue jacket. I love it. Just for Peter Rabbit. Why are you the perfect Peter Rabbit? Oh, I, I, I could never be, uh, be so um, confident as to say such a thing. I, I, don't think, uh, I don't think that's for me to say, really. I feel very honored and, and overwhelmed to be asked to, to, to voice a character that means so much to so many people, you know? Uh, um, and I think, yeah, what's amazing is, like, I, when I first got asked to do it, I felt very daunted by it. I, f I thought... I don't know if this is right for me. And then I heard that uh, this was the first time the Beatrix Potter estate had ever said yes to a movie version of this character and had rejected countless proposals over the last few decades. So I was like, well, if they think it's right, if they think it honors the character and honors so many moments across the short stories, then then it's an honor to be asked to do such a thing, you know? I think it's great because, let me tell you why I think you're the perfect one, because you're mischievous. You are Peter Rabbit. You, you, you have a, you're a sneaky, funny kind of guy. <laughs> so, and that's what he is. I do enjoy the mischief. There is no denying that. Yes, I, I would always look for fun uh, wherever it may be found. Yeah, and equally, as is the way with Peter, that could be to my detriment, you know? How familiar were, were you with the stories? Oh, very, very much so. Like, there's no one who grew up in Britain that, that wasn't read these stories growing up. It, it's a, a a really important piece of real estate, you know? So, yeah, I was familiar with loads of them. Uh, Blue Jacket Day, you did a big announcement. Of course, it's for reading is fundamental. Tell me why that's important to you. Well, I think what's really important is that the children today, with all of the wealth of things that are open to them, whether it be cell phones, iPads, TVs, all these things, um, that they don't lose... Um, that fundamental joy of learning to read and reading a story and and when I sp spoke to Will about this film Will's the director of the movie we, we sort of said wouldn't it be wonderful if kids will go to a movie theatre and watch this film and leave and go back and find these stories and either read them themselves or be read them by their parents and then when they grow up read them to their children and their children and their children that you would never lose sight of how important that is in a child's development to be read to and to read it is a a wonderful privilege in fact uh, in a world where there are many many children who never ever get that right and would love nothing more than to be able to read and read a story, and it's not something we should ever lose in our society, you know? 